Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. In the West African nation of Mauritania, women who accuse a man of rape run the risk of being jailed simply for speaking out. The problem? Confusion over how to reconcile Islamic doctrine with international human rights law. The result? A penal code that offers little protection to victims of rape. Badia is an 18-year-old Mauritanian woman who can't reveal her face or her real name. She says that she was raped and became pregnant, and that was just the beginning of her troubles. I woke up at 4 a.m. I gave birth to a little girl who was stillborn. Now, Badia risks spending the rest of her life in jail. Her baby was born dead, she says, but the court didn't believe her. She has been tried, convicted and imprisoned on the charges of killing her infant and zina, sex outside of marriage. There is a term that we refer to as zina, which is in Sharia, which is our law. A sexual relationship outside of marriage is considered to be a zina. The law in Mauritania is largely based on Islamic religious doctrine, or Sharia. And because Sharia doesn't allow intimacy outside of marriage, women who are raped, unless they can provide conclusive evidence of sexual assault, risk going to jail for the crime of zina. But some women in Mauritania argue this amounts to punishing the victim. Absolutely. I can tell you that there are victims of rape who are imprisoned for zina. Fatimata Umbai is the first female lawyer in Mauritania. She says that while her country remains deeply conservative, it has made progress. There was a time when we only applied Sharia law, when women were lashed or stoned. We don't do that anymore. Now we have a hybrid law. As part of these changes, Mauritania has committed to upholding international human rights standards, among them the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Fatmetu Minthatri, the Minister for Women's Affairs, confirms Mauritania's commitment. We stand with the international community in defending the rights of women and children against all forms of violence. But despite this official position, when it comes to sexual abuse, Mauritania's legal system still offers women very little protection compared to other countries. Reconciling human rights norms with practices rooted in narrow interpretations of Islamic law is proving to be a struggle. And nowhere is that more evident than in the fact that reporting rape exposes the victims to the charge of zina and the risk of jail. A lot of women find themselves being transformed from victim to the accused. Merely an accusation of zina and it is directly to prison. A former midwife who opened Mauritania's first rape crisis center seven years ago, Zainabu Musa, knows firsthand how prevalent sexual assault can be. The number of victims treated at her center in Nwokshot has almost doubled in the last few years. But some women do not dare to come. Zainabu and Miriam, a caseworker, travel under the cover of night to meet 24-year-old Aisha and her mother. Aisha, fully veiled and with an assumed name to protect her identity, says that she was attacked by three young men and raped by one of them. One of the attackers had a blade or something in his hand. Aisha maintains that her violator was in fact her suitor. This man wanted to marry me, but my family refused him because he wasn't a good man. Her mother says he raped her to bring shame to her family. But if Aisha pursues the case and cannot prove that she was raped, she could face imprisonment. To prove this rape, we need the clothes with blood on them. Two days ago, Aisha's mother washed the blood-stained clothes. The girl, if she doesn't have any proof of rape, can be condemned for zina. Because there is now no physical evidence to back Aisha's allegation, Zainabu worries that Aisha herself may be charged with immorality or zina. She arranges for Aisha to see a lawyer at the rape crisis center. Lawyer Bilal listens to Aisha describe her relationship with the man who raped her. 
One day he asked me to sleep with him. I said I was a virgin and I would never do that. I said I would never do it because of the shame it would bring on my family. He said, one day I will do it to you, whether you say yes or no. I will do it to you anyway. I have to tell you that there is a risk that it will be interpreted as not exactly a rape. Because the relationship you had with him is not allowed. It's not allowed under Article 306. Boyfriends and girlfriends, it's not allowed. It's forbidden by law. Faced with the prospect of prosecution under Article 306, dealing with threats to Islamic morality, Zainabu and lawyer Bilal decide that for Aisha to press charges for rape would be too risky. Aisha is not alone. Article 306 is the main reason most women will not report rape, says Umbai. They prefer to keep quiet because they know that if they speak out, they themselves will become the accused. They're going to be accused of provoking the situation. They're going to accuse them of being out unaccompanied. They're going to accuse them of having tempted the man into having sex. So they prefer to say nothing at all. The pregnant women like Bardia saying something is hardly an option since Article 307 of the Penal Code states that pregnancy is only possible through consensual sex. And there's more. The Penal Code also fails to accurately define rape, leaving matters wide open to interpretation by judges. In law, they need to clearly define rape and clearly define all forms of sexual violence, sexual harassment, sexual abuse and sexual exploitation and rape. Many women like Zainabu believe that Islamic law in principle contains all the human rights that women need. What's missing, she says, is for the courts to interpret the law in a way that is consistent with international human rights standards. We're not looking for more than we're entitled to, which is already in Muslim law, and that Sharia gives us. I would say that sometimes we don't have access to our rights because of interpretation or misunderstanding. A misunderstanding that can easily turn a victim of rape into a perceived threat to public morality. Today, how can a woman possibly prove the contrary to a judge? How can she prove that she was a victim of rape? She can't. She has nothing. Mati Mintbwaid, a spokesperson for the Women's Ministry, says that the government is going to change the codes to bring them into line with the United Nations Convention. Certainly, there will be a revision of these penal codes. When? It's a work in progress. We are certainly in the process of doing it for sure. But how long the process of revising the penal code will take is anybody's guess. Though the Mauritanian constitution guarantees equality in public office, there are still no women magistrates, judges, public prosecutors or police commissioners.